Did you know that every year, Toastmasters from across the world compete in an international speech contest to develop their skills and learn from other speakers? Additionally, this year, our district, District 42, is hosting an evaluation contest. These are opportunities for everyone in this club to participate, whether as a judge, a contestant, or a volunteer. Today, we are honored to have three Toastmaster experts in competitions in the room today, and they'll be participating on a panel to help you understand what the value in contests is for you. Please join me in welcoming our panelists. First up, Molly Hamilton. Molly has been a Toastmaster for four and a half years. She originally joined in 2010 for seven months and then rejoined in November 2019. Her main reason for joining was to meet people and make new friends while keeping her brain active. She's an active participant in speech contests, representing Region 4 this past year as a semi-finalist all the way in the Bahamas at the 2023 International Speech Competition. The year before that, she was a finalist representing Region 1 at the World Championship of Public Speaking. She finished top eight in the world out of 33,000 participants from 143 countries. Second, our next panelist is Jocelyn Hasty. Jocelyn completed her first Distinguished Toastmaster Award under the traditional program in 2019, and she's been awarded two pathways, DTMs, since then. That's Distinguished Toastmaster status. Jocelyn was District 42 Director in 2019 and 2020. Her visionary leadership moved the district into a virtual world, which is quite a feat, and she created the original tech team, which was headed by Catherine Sekundiak, who supported the first round of online contests. She also completed, competed on the district stage a couple of times and says she'll get them next time. Please welcome Jocelyn Hasty. Our third and final panelist is Nandini Venkatesan. As a distinguished Toastmaster and educator, VP of Education at Igniter's Toastmasters, Nandini believes contests can help you stretch and develop your skills. She has won both the D42 Table Topics Contest and the D42 Evaluation Contest twice. Nandini is the D42 feedback leader for our very own Circle of Gold and has helped many contestants make their speeches stronger and build their confidence. Please welcome Nandini Venkatesan. Welcome all to the stage today. It's an honor to have you here at Dynamically Speaking Toastmasters. I'm honored to be your panel moderator for the day. We'll start out each round of questions with two minutes per question for each panelist. At the end of this session, we'll go into a lightning round with one minute per panelist, and then we'll open up the floor to questions from the audience. Hold your questions until it's time for questions from the audience. You'll all have an opportunity to take part today and with your permission, panelists, we'd like to keep going until we're either out of time or out of questions. Is that good with you ladies today? Perfect, thank you so much. To take the floor first, I have a question for you, Molly. Molly, can you share a very specific example of how participating in last year's international speech contest has impacted you? Thank you very much, Tammy. I was surprised at the most wonderful benefit I got out of the contest last year. And it may not be what you're expecting. And it was the feeling of being supported. I had never received as much support as I 
received last year going into the contest from anyone outside of my family. It was phenomenal. It started at club level where everybody was helping me to refine my speech before I even went into the club contest. Then going into the various uh, aspects of the contest because there's seven different steps that you take before you get to the finals or by the time you've got to the finals. Along that whole journey, the circle of gold, I absolutely can't thank Nandini and her team enough. They were inspirational for me. They took my speech from a one to a, you know, a seven. From the seven to 10, I got a chance to work with some of the coaches from all over the world, many of the past champions. I would have never, ever done that if I hadn't gone into the contest. So just to sum it up, for me, it was the achieving of the feeling of support and knowing that I wasn't alone and that people were out there rooting for me and willing to put in the time and effort to help me do the best I could to give my message to the world. Back to you, Tammy. Thank you, Molly. That was an amazing uh, example of how Toastmasters is such a benefit to everybody in providing a wide community of support outside of our club. Jocelyn, my next question is for you. What are a couple of the key benefits for individuals who might want to get involved in the contest? Thank you for that question, Tammy. I think that the single biggest improvement in my speaking was in preparing for a contest. You see, most of the time, we don't have the opportunity to refine a speech. We tend to deliver, especially if we're sticking within our club, we deliver a speech once and may never deliver it again, even if we repurpose portions of it. The real world, when you go into it as a speaker, requires that you have a message that you know very, very well and present very, very well. So my belief is that a speech contest truly, truly helps you prepare for skills you will use in the real world. I also believe that the biggest single improvement in my speaking was in the very first year I became a speaker for an evaluation contest. So I got half a dozen very solid evaluations of my speech and could really take from that to be able to improve my speech greatly. Also in the speaking contest itself, as I moved from level to level to level, as I said previously, I really got the opportunity to make that speech better. Also, I think the more different audiences that you can present your speech to, the more comfortable you become on stage and speaking. For all of those reasons, I believe that speech contests are absolutely one of the very best ways to improve your speaking and improve it quickly. Thank you, Jocelyn. Who among us hasn't heard the old adage, practice makes perfect? I like to think that contests are an opportunity for perfect practice. I would agree, Tammy. Thanks, Jocelyn. Nandini, my next question is for you. What do you see in 2023-24 contest season as being one of the biggest opportunities for people to participate? I think one of the biggest opportunities for our members is through contest, you grow faster. You practice a speech more than once, as Jocelyn said, so you start really honing in on particular skills. I also find that you get more feedback because you're practicing more and more feedback allows you to really develop your writing and your speaking skills. Practice makes perfect, not quite, but it does take you a long way. I also think that entering evaluation contests, I learned more quickly how to get to the point, to be clear and to be specific. And all of these skill sets helped develop my leadership side. So my speaking got stronger and so did my leadership. And it helped me not only give feedback to other people, but I started paying attention to my own feedback and took my own advice. And I have to say, 
that contests are accelerated learning. I also think that there are opportunities to build confidence. Was I nervous? Yeah, I was really nervous many times. In fact, most times. But as I competed, I started to find strategies to help reduce that anxiety. I don't know how many of you are anxious. I hope I'm not the only one in the room. But contests helped me get better at that. I also found that I started looking for mentors. There were people who were competing, past contestants, other people who had spoken outside of Toastmasters that I could really turn to in order to get better at confidence. As I got more confident, I started taking on more roles. I would have never been an area director. I would have never co-chaired a district conference. I would have never taken on those kind of roles in the district if my confidence hadn't been built from contests. And finally, the opportunities, the leaps in learning. You enter a contest, you are learning all the time. It's an opportunity for you to grow and to learn a lot. And my advice is enter a contest, learn something and go back and share it with your club. Not only will you be stronger, your clubs will too. Madam Toastmaster. Tammy's having some technical difficulties this morning. And I don't know if she needs me to step in for her or not, but let's assume that I'm standing in for her. And I know she prepped you with your next question. Okay, Tammy, there, back to you. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Freddie. My apologies for technology. It happens to all of us, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, bear with me for two and a half seconds here. I The last that I heard is, um, sorry, Nandini was talking about opportunities for this upcoming contest season. And the last I heard is that you were talking about networking with other Toastmasters across the Toastmaster universe and really getting better at those evaluation pieces. So thank you for that informative piece. Molly, how can individuals best prepare to make the most of their involvement in this contest? Like having technical issues. <laughs> Tammy, you'll find this interesting. One of the biggest questions that people ask when we're competing is, what is the thing that makes you the most nervous? And when I competed online, the number one thing that made everybody the most nervous, whether you were a contestant or you were the one running the contest, was technical issues. <laughs> so you're in good company. Going back to your question with regards to preparation, when you go into a contest, I think there's three main things that you want to think about. The big one is what's your why? Why do you want to go into the contest? Because you're going to have to go back to that why when you go throughout the contest, especially if you go through the various levels, because at times you're going to say, what am I doing this for? I can't do it anymore. It's too hard. Oh. And you need something to, to pull you back in to motivate you. So what is your why? For me, last year, my why was I had a keynote that I wanted to write and I wanted to take advantage of the competition for me to work hard on a couple of speeches that could end up being modules in my keynote. So whether I won the competition or not, I would have achieved another goal, which was my keynote. So I won no matter what. The, the second thing is that when you pick a speech, pick one that resonates resonates with resonates with your heart because then you have the passion to be able to do that speech over and over because it's a message that is so important to you that you need to share it with the world to make it a better place. So you've got to know your why. You've got to pick a speech from your heart. And the last is, and we've heard it already several times, practice, practice, practice. You need to set aside the time every single day from today on, once you decide to go in the contest, to practice your speech. And the benefit is, no matter what happens, you will be a better speaker by the end. <laughs> so know your why, pick a speech 
from your heart and practice. Back to, back to you, Tammy. Thank you, Molly, for that enthusiastic response. We could really feel your heart coming through. And certainly uh, your practices showed in the past few years. I was I was fortunate enough to actually sneak behind the scenes and watch Molly practice. And it's amazing just how much better each speech gets as you go into it again and again, playing with the words and the timing. It's wonderful. Jocelyn. You've been on stage so many times, and as a past district director, I am so interested in hearing your response to this next question. What goes on behind the scenes to make a contest happen? Well, that's where the most fun is, because behind the scenes, there can be wine. But along with the wine, there is also a tremendous amount of work that goes forward in gathering all the people that make a contest run. The first person you need to gather up is your chief judge, because your chief judge will be helping you make sure that all the rest of the judges are lined up and know what they need to do. You also need your timers, you need your ballot counters, so it's an entire team that gets together. The reality is that we have a lot of fun behind the scenes and we can definitely help the speakers by making things run smoothly so that they're not anxious when they get there. So it's a big team, it's a fun team, and it's almost always a group that has some real professionals in it. So just being in the room with them will rub off on you. You see, when you're with a bunch of people that deserve to be honored, the honor falls to you as well. I love your response, Jocelyn. It's just amazing having both competed and been behind the scenes, who you get to meet and how many people are actually behind you as a competitor, rooting for you every time you step foot on that stage and take the mic. I, I was truly overwhelmed uh, when I when I saw how that all comes together and the efforts that are put for somebody else's success. And, and it's just a wonderful thing that we do. Indeed it is. Thanks, Tammy. Nandini, what advice would you give to somebody who's brand new to Toastmasters regarding contests and how they can get involved? Do you remember when you were a newer Toastmaster? Did anyone take the time to talk to you about contests, spend some time with you. One of the suggestions I would offer a new Toastmaster is to volunteer for a role, something like a ballot counter or a timer, or even shadows a Toastmaster or another role in the contest. Why, as Jocelyn said, there's so much going on behind the scenes, lots of opportunities that you can begin to explore. And it's also an opportunity to start working with more experienced members to learn from them, save yourself time and energy. I'd also encourage you to visit another club or another contest. Some of the best ways that I've learned is from learning from other contestants. I've learned from Molly, I've learned from Jocelyn. That's the wonderful part of Toastmasters is if you go to another contest and you learn from other contestants, you not only are developing your skills by observing, but you can get the confidence if you talk to them and you find out, yeah, they're nervous too when they enter the contest and it'll give you some courage. I'd also suggest to you, go and visit a contest and then come back and share a couple of ideas so that newer Toastmasters can hear what you learned. That's the fabulous aspect of Toastmasters. You can bring back what you've learned. And finally, I would say, challenge yourself. You never know until you try. Was I pushed in the contest? You bet. Did I even know what they were? Didn't know. They told me, just try it, see what happens. Was I great the first time? Absolutely not. Did I learn tons? You bet. So challenge yourself. One suggestion is enter the evaluation contest. Why? There's no eligibility criteria. You can just Tell yourself, I'm going to enter the contest and learn three things about evaluation. Listen to the test speaker, give your feedback, 
learn and keep learning. You are Toastmasters. You don't know what you can do until you try. Back to you, Tammy. Thank you, Nandini. Indeed, uh, you really made me think with that question back to my first contest. And I was a ballot counter. It was my first role. I loved it. It, it was certainly a sneak peek into how contests run and gave me a setup to go into becoming a contestant. So now's the time for our audience to start thinking about questions you have for our, for our panelists. First, we're gonna go into a lightning round and this is gonna address some of your favorite questions about reasons why you don't wanna compete. So refute the following statement, Molly. I'm too scared to compete. You have one minute. One of the biggest reasons why people don't compete is because they're afraid of losing. If that's the worst case basis, so what? If you compete, there are so many things that you will learn and the advantages versus the disadvantages of losing, why not? If you don't compete, you've already lost. If you do compete, you will become a better speaker. You will be introduced to all sorts of people that you would have never guessed who can take your speaking to a whole new level. You can get the feeling of support. You can work on speeches more than you would have ever done without them. Yes. Everyone, I, I venture to say, everyone is afraid to compete, but don't let it hold you back. The positives far outweigh the negatives. Back to you, Tammy. Thank you, Molly. Jocelyn, I just don't have the time. I can't possibly compete. My life is so busy. Boy, oh boy, that's a big one. And my comment would be, that if you are scripting word for word, that's when it takes the time. But if you choose to speak about something you truly care about, all you'll need is basic notes. I always recommend that speakers know their first two or three sentences very well and their last two or three sentences very well. But the middle, I always recommend that they speak about something that they know well and that they really care about. So all they need is two or three points in the middle. If you have a basic idea where you're going to go, you don't need to be scripted. You don't need to know every word. And just in case you're waiting for someone to give you permission to be less than perfect when you speak, I grant it to you today until you can grant it to yourself. We don't have to be perfect to be brilliant. And we all came here for a reason. Our reason for most of us was to learn to speak better. And if you don't get up on the stage and speak, that's gonna be really hard to do. Thank you, Jocelyn. You don't have to be perfect to be brilliant. Can somebody please make that as a bumper sticker? Because I think we all need to hear that. I can't come up with a speech, Nandini. How am I going to compete? How many times have all of us said that? I can't come up with a speech. I'm going to offer you a couple of ideas that have worked for me. One, brainstorming. Put yourself a timer, 15 minutes, and then start brainstorming. Talk about what are you passionate about? What is it that really gets you up in the morning? Besides dynamically speaking, what else gets you up in the morning? The more passionate you are about something, the easier it's going to be to come up with stories and a key message. And once you've written down a whole variety of ideas, when you brainstorm, pick one or two ideas to begin your speech and then see where that happens. It's amazing once you start to tell a story, how the speech starts to develop. Second is, Make life easier for yourself. Rewrite an earlier speech. 
You don't have to start from scratch with a blank piece of paper to write your speech for the contest. Go back and see some of the speeches that you've already done. We see competitors do that and tweak the speeches. That way you've got a basic template and you just have to fill in some of the ideas. And finally, a life lesson. What's the key message? What gets you that you always remember what somebody did for you and how you felt about it and share that lesson. We all benefit when other people speak about the lessons that they've learned and how we can grow from it. Back to you, Tammy. Thank you so much. Nandini, I love that feedback. In part of what I loved about it was that you set a time limit on the brainstorming. You didn't say like take three weeks and come up with a list of ideas. You said take 15 minutes. And when you put that structure around it, you really start to force creativity because you have a window within which to work and constraint, if you will. So that that for me was really, really interesting that you led off with that, with that parameter. Now it's time for questions from the audience. And we have quite a variety of questions. And I'm going to open this up to any member on the panel who wants to step forward. The first question that I can see is, who is your fiercest competitor and why? Who is your first, fiercest competitor and why? I think Molly, I'm going to direct this one to you. That's a very interesting question because I never considered any of the fellow participants as competitors to me. When I go into the competition, my headspace is what message do all of us have that we want to share with the world? And I'm excited about hearing their message. I'm excited about having the opportunity to be able to share my message, again, in the hopes of making the world a better place. I have never considered any of the other participants as my competitors, just as my fellow speakers and my friends with a message. Oh, that's you, such Tammy. a... That's such an inspiring uh, response, Molly. Is there anybody else who has something to add? <laughs> Go ahead, Nandi. <laughs> well, let me tell you, one of my fiercest competitors is in the room here. Freddie was one of the best evaluators I'd ever seen. And when I say fiercest competitor, I say it in the most generous way. Freddie is warm, she was caring, she was competitive and brought the best out in all of us. So we felt like in a competition, we wanted to do our very best for the audience. And what I learned from Freddie, every time she's been in a contest, I've competed against her. I think you're all lucky. You probably have amazing contestants. Freddie, you're pretty fierce, but I love the fact that you were competing and you helped raise the game. Yeah, and I I want to I want to echo Nandini's comment on if you don't have rock solid competitors around you, I don't think you will ever be driven to do your best. If you think you can just walk in and win it, I don't think you're going to be prepared well enough to be able to deliver that speech that will really resonate with the audience. And for me, probably the biggest person was Russ Dantu, and in, I made it to the district stage in my uh, in my rookie year, and I know I wouldn't have made it without Russ driving out to High River and giving me two hours of his time to improve my speaking. So, yes, I unlike Molly, I believe that we need competitors, but I also believe it's so that we can all raise the bar, as Nandini said, and shine. Absolutely. Russ is a tremendous competitor, and I know Absolutely. he's south of the border right now, uh, down helping other speakers, learning how to speak, and it's a fantastic. Yeah, I've never had to compete against Freddie yet, yet. 
Well, let me tell you, this is a hard club to get out of just to make it to the area competition. Dynamically speaking, we have some very fierce competitors in the room, including our past winners like Dana and, and Misty as well. So uh, moving on to our next question, uh, what was the most challenging moment you faced during a contest and what did it teach you? Jocelyn, why don't we start with you? Oh, um, I think for me, the most challenging moment was the second year I competed and I was going to Division D contest and I had to compete against John Hallett. Now, John Hallett has also made it to the world stage. And I really didn't think that was fair that someone with my limited speaking background had to go against John. And I think that because I knew he would be there, as I said earlier, it's only when you know you have rock solid competitors that I think you turn well for me personally I should say it for me that I turn the heat up and understand that I have to be the very best that I can be so that when I come off the stage I can look in the mirror and say you did good and I think the big thing is just to understand as I said earlier that I need to be prepared but not perfect I'm not ever going for a level of perfection but I am going for a level of excellence every time I hit the stage, because I think that shows the most respect for your audience, that you're prepared when you get there. But perfection is an unachievable goal, so I never head for it. Thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, in the, in the, for time purposes, I'm just gonna leap to the next question. Uh, this one is from Dana. Molly, how do you not go off your time limit when you're speaking from the heart? How do you not go over your time limit when you're speaking from the heart? Unlike Jocelyn, I am very uh, scripted in the sense that I have examined every single word. And I do try to do my speeches following the script that I have written. I have practiced, first of all, in a seven minute speech, I do a word count for my speech and it is usually between six and 700 words. Right there, I know that if I keep my word count between six and 700, then you are going to be within that seven, seven and a half minute time frame. Even though it's scripted, I try to never go, or I always try to keep with my heart. Just because it's scripted doesn't mean that I am still not drawing from my heart because you have to. That's the way that I remember my speech. That's the way that I can be passionate for people and get the message across. But by scripting it and doing the homework ahead of time with the word count and practicing, practicing, practicing and making sure that you're not going over that period, that's how you make sure you stay within that seven, seven and a half minute guideline. Thank you, Molly. Karis has a question that I'm going to direct to Nandini. What are your top tips to help calm your nerves before you present? Have you got an hour? That's how nervous I get at contests. I do a lot. I'll give you a few ideas. I think what's really important is you have to find what works for you. And each contest, as I started competing, I started finding some of the things that work for me. One, I play music. I put on headphones just before so that I Depends on what's going on, but usually it's a fast paced pop kind of music. It gets me in the mood, it gets me energized, it gets me excited, and it gets me out of my head. I think that's one of the biggest things that we can do for anxiety is to get out of our head. The second thing that I'm gonna offer is that when you get nervous and anxious, if you can walk around a little bit and burn off energy, 
I don't like to sit. And many people know that about me. I get nervous if they have all the contestants sitting in the front row. So if that happens, then I've got my hands under my chair. I'm doing my hand exercises to get rid of nerves. But if you have an opportunity to walk, move, do something with that nervous energy, then you can hone it as soon as you get on the stage. And finally, I would say it's okay to be nervous. Nervous means you care. Nervous means that you are thinking of the audience and you want to do your best. So if you're nervous, I would say to you, you're in good hands. Just put those headphones on, put those iPods in, dance a little bit, move a little bit. And the next time you're on stage, try it and see what works for you. Thank you, Nandini. We're going to move into our final question. And this one is from Shayla. And I'm going to ask Jocelyn, then Molly, then Nandini to answer this question. Is there a winning speech formula? Whether you're looking at humorous, emotional, or bold messages, what do you see to be the most impactful or resonate the best when it comes to contests? Oh boy. I don't think there is a formula. I think whatever it is needs to be something that you truly, as Molly said, resonates with you, that you feel very, very passionate about. And I think there are a variety of speeches that work. What I do know is that you need to speak about something that you deeply, deeply care about, because there's no way you can fake that kind of passion. Thank you, Jocelyn. Nandini, or Molly, sorry. <laughs> Do I think there's a formula? Formula kind of has a negative connotation to it. So I, I don't like that word. But are there various things that you see in speeches that can make a speech more compelling or more interesting for your audience? Yeah, I think there is. When you look at your life, you run into various conflicts in your life. And sometimes those are the best topics for your international speech because people all have conflicts. So right away, they can be drawn in. And these conflicts don't have to be crazy. I, th I think one guy was because he had a flat tire and he went through the process of fixing the flat tire. Like they are everyday occurrences. That's what I think really makes a speech cool is when it's just an everyday occurrence. You haven't gone and climbed Mount Everest, although wouldn't that be an interesting speech too? So in a speech I see quite often, you've got a conflict. You have, what is the solution you wanted in that conflict? What did you try to fix that conflict? Take people through that journey. What obstacles did you run into? Uh, what uh, did you eventually, how did you eventually solve it? What did you learn by going through that process? And what message could you pass on to someone else so that they don't have to go through that same procedure? How can you help people? I think if you have those components in a speech, especially any speech, doesn't have to be the international speech contest, those give the essence, the foundation for a wonderful speech. Nandini, take it. What can I say that Jocelyn and Molly haven't already said? I mean, they're awesome. I would say that if you can listen to the world champions, that there is some powerful information and messages. And something that I learned from Craig Valentine was the idea of that if you speak from your heart, because when you care, it shows up in your voice. It shows up in the way that you connect to the audience. Add a little humor. Anytime you can bring humor and learning together, the audience is going to lean in and that's what you want. And finally, I would say the head, as Craig Valentine talks about what's important. As Molly said, what message? Anytime you can teach a life lesson, something that you've gone through, you've experienced it, you felt it, and you've learned from it, and you can offer that to the audience, that's a gift. 
that many people will take away. I've been stopped at the back of the room, in the bathroom, and outside the contest when people have resonated and then they want to share their stories. And what I've learned is when they share their stories, they also have a winning speech. Back to you, Tammy. Thank you, Nandini, Jocelyn, and Molly for that really insightful feedback. And what an honor and a blessing it has been to have you come here today to share your wisdom and experience with Dynamically Speaking Toastmasters.